All right, and we are back um, with it, and we're going to continue our discussion um, of graphing linear inequalities. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're actually going to move into systems of inequalities, and this is actually our next um, standard, th standard 13.4. I can graphically represent the solution of a system of linear inequalities using all forms of a line. Uh, so the good news about this lesson is really um, nothing new. We're just going to take everything that we talked about last time and then really just combine it. Because remember, a system is just more than one um, line. All right, so here to get you thinking about everything, to review what we did last time, what I'd like you to do is do the open here. So do problems one and two, uh, pause the video, uh, do both of those problems. All right, then turn the video back on and we'll check and see how you did. All right, so let's look at your work. Okay, so a couple of things to remember, all right, when we talk about this. So the first thing is, all right, we just graph the lines like normal. So we recognize what form it's in, we use what we know about graphing lines, and then, all right, we determine if it's solid or dotted depending on the inequality symbol. So remember, if it's less than or greater than, we're going to have a dotted line. Okay, so for this particular problem, it's in slope-intercept form. All right, so my starting point is 0, 7. I have a slope of negative 3 over 1, and then I draw my dashed line. And then remember, we now need to test to see where to shade. And we always want to test, or excuse me, we always want to shade the true region. And we said the easiest point to test to determine that true region was 0, 0. So notice when I plugged in 0, 0 into our equation, I get 0 is less than 7, which is a true statement. So now I know... All right, that the side 0, 0 on is the true side, so that's the side I'd want to shape. All right, moving to number 2. All right, so it's in point-slope form. We know we're going to get a solid line because it's greater than or equal to, which means we're going to include the points on the line as part of our solution set. So because it's in point-slope form, my starting point is 2, negative 4. I have a slope of 2 thirds, so up 2 to the right 3, up 2 to the right 3. And then once again, I need a test, all right, to see where the true section is. So once again, if I plug in 0, 0 and go through my order of operations, all right, you should have gotten 0 is greater than or equal to negative 5.33 or negative 5 and a third, and that is, once again, a true statement. So the side where 0, 0 is is the true side, so that's where I want to shape. So that really just um, reviews everything we talked about last time when we discussed graphing linear inequalities. So all we're going to do today, all we're going to do today is take those two things and put them together. All right, so here, all right, let's look at the part... Uh, the next part of our opener here. So what I want you to do is just grab three different colored um, writing uh, utensils. So colored pencils, um, markers, highlighters, something. And all I want you to do now is redo both of these problems, but do them in different colors on this grid. So pick a color and redo number one down here. Pick a color and redo two down here. And then take your third color, and I want you to shade in where those two regions overlap. All right, so once again, pause the video, do that, and then we'll come back and see how you did. All right, so uh, I picked green and blue, and then I used a highlighter to do the, um, sh the overlap region. All right, and so there's what it looks like. So notice there's no difference in doing this problem versus the two that we started class with. All right, the only difference is now how do I interpret the solution? All right, and the solution is that overlapped region. All right, so that's the only difference between a regular inequality and a system of inequalities. So we have to have that overlap region, okay? And you can kind of see that that's the upper left-hand region right here when we did that. Okay, so now, now flip your page, flip your page, and let's look at the back here. All right, so now keep those same colored writing utensils, and now I want you to do this again. All right, so now you have uh, an inequality in standard form, and then you have an inequality in slope-intercept form. So same thing. So on this one, all right, coordinate plane, pick a color, all right, and do this inequality. Take another color and do your second inequality, and then once again, use that third qual um, color to find that overlap region. So go ahead and pause the video, do that, and then turn back on, and we'll see how you did. All right, so... Let me move this out of the way and let me pull up my answer key here. All right, so I use red, excuse me, I did not use red. I use green and blue. All right, green and blue. All right, so for our, um, cis, or excuse me, our inequality in standard form here, all right, I used green. So once again, remember, we do the cover up method, right? So, uh, you know, I cover up y to find my x intercept, so 12 divided by 3 is 4. Then I cover up x to find my y intercept, 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. We know it's a solid line. 
And then notice I shaded below that line. Now notice when we did our second line here, our second inequality, it's in slope intercept form, so I'm going to start at 0, 4. My slope is 3 over 4. It's going to be a dashed line. And then notice this time, I shade above this. So this is something we want you to be aware of. So notice there is no overlap. All right? So it doesn't have to overlap, and that creates a different situation, and that is when we have a no solution for those inequalities. All right? So if we don't get any overlap, all right, then it's a no solution problem. So just be aware of that. And then also notice, all right, some of you may have seen this, but these are parallel lines. All right? So the only time we could have a no solution problem is when we have some parallel lines. Right? Because other lines will always intersect eventually, which means we will eventually get some type of all right, overlap. Now, just because we have parallel lines doesn't mean we're going to have no solution. Because we could have shaded in between them, all right, or maybe we would have shaded up or down and had some overlap. All right? So just because we have parallel lines doesn't mean we will have no solution, but we can only have no solution when we have parallel lines. So just remember that that's not a converse. That is true. Okay, so get a little geometry term in there for you. Okay, so now... All right, let's just look at the next couple pages here. So this is really just recapping, all right, the whole idea of, of linear systems, all right? So once again, this is these two problems really just illustrate what we talked about last time, which is graphing singular linear inequalities. All right, you can see that we have a dotted line here. I know it's a little hard to see, but that is a dotted line. All right, it kind of blurs together, all right? Okay, this is a solid line. You can see the shading. And then once we combine those here, Right? You can see that the overlap is this region. So this would be our solution, right? would be this region up here. All right? So just remember, we're just going to graph it just like two separate problems. All right? Graph the first inequality, all right? shade. Graph the second inequality, shade. The overlap is the solution. All right? And then just keep in mind, all right? so if we look at the next page here, all right? if you flip it over, so once again, all right? okay, solid line, solid line, and then notice our shading here. Now, if we were to put these both together and make it a system, and that's what all the system is, right? Just taking more than one inequality, all right, and graphing them in the same coordinate plane. All right, notice we get this picture. Once again, we get those parallel lines. The shading is on opposite sides. There's no overlap, okay? All right, so where do they overlap? Nowhere, right? And so what does that mean? It means we don't have a solution, right? So just remember that that is a possibility. All right, so once again, if we can anticipate, all right, what the solution is, that helps us understand and interpret the problem. All right, so now that is, uh, all that being said, let's go through some examples. So let's turn to the next page, and we're going to do four examples together. All right, and then, um, then we'll um, move on to more work with solving in our next lesson. All right, so now, once again, it's just really two independent problems. All right. Now, I'm going to show you a way I do systems just because it makes it a little less cluttered for me so I can see things a little bit more clearly. Now, you can keep doing it the way you, you want to do it. That's fine. But this kind of, I think, helps you kind of see the graph a little bit better as we go. All right. So, once again, let's just start by looking at our first inequality. Okay. We have to recognize what form it is. So, this is the form of a vertical line. So, I know I'm going to have a vertical line. I also know it's going to be a dashed vertical line because it's less than. So, at x is equal to 4, I'm going to put a vertical line that is dashed just like this. All right, so there's my first inequality. All right, and then once again, we're going to test zero. So if I plug zero in, zero is less than four. That's a true statement. So normally, I would shade zero, zero. So the side was zero, zero, which is the left-hand side here. And I would just shade all this region in. Now, because it's a system, all what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw an arrow to where I'm supposed to shade, just like this. So I should shade to the left. All right, and that just keeps my, gla my graph a little cleaner until I graph the next line. Okay, now when I look at the next line, right, I can recognize what form this is. This is a form of a horizontal line, and it's going to be a solid horizontal line. So I'm going to go to y equals 5, and I'm going to draw in my solid horizontal line here, like so. All right, so there's my solid horizontal line. Now, once again, we want to test 0. So I test 0 is greater than or equal to 5. Now notice that's a false statement. So below this line is where 0 is. So that means everything below the line is false. So I would normally shade above. And once again, I'm just going to draw these arrows. So I'd want to shade above this line like so. All right, so now the overlap is the region to where both sets of arrows are pointing. 
All right, and we can see that that's kind of this upper left-hand region right here is where both sets of arrows are pointing. So then I'm going to shade here. And for me, this just makes it a little cleaner, and I can see the graph a little bit better because then sometimes when I've shaded that first line, then finding my points and graphing my second line sometimes is a little hard to do. All right? Now, if you want to shade and then shade and then darken the overlap region, that's totally fine as well. All right? I would just be consistent in your approach with how you do this. All right, so let's look at number two. All right, so once again, start with the first one. All right, recognize the form. This is a vertical line. All right, once again, it's going to be dotted because it's greater than. All right, so I'm going to go to four, and I'm going to draw in my dotted vertical line here. So let's do that just like so. All right. Now, once again, let's test and see where we need to shade. So zero is greater than four. So that is a false statement. So zero is on the left-hand side, so all of this is false. So I would want to shade the right-hand side here, so I'm going to draw my arrow. And that's where I want to shade to the right this time. Okay, so x is less than or equal to negative 2. So once again, recognize the form. This is the form of a vertical line. It's going to be a solid vertical line because it's less than or equal to. So I'm going to draw my solid vertical line in at x equals negative 2 here. Just like this. All right. And then once again, we want to test. So I'm going to test 0 as less than or equal to negative 2. That is false. So once again, 0 is on the right-hand side of this vertical line. So everything to the right is false, which means I'd want to shade to the left. All right. So notice now, notice those arrows are pointing away from each other. They are not pointing to the same region, right? And if I had shaded, I would have shaded over here. And I would have shaded over here. And so we can see that there is no overlap. All right. Once again, we see we have some parallel lines. So that's an indication that, oh, if I have parallel lines, maybe it could be no solution, right? So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And then if there is no overlap, just remember that means no solution. All right. So now let's take a look at problem three. We'll do two more together here, three and four, and then that'll be it for this particular lesson. All right. So once again, recognizing the form before we begin the problem. All right, so we have um, point, or excuse me, slope-intercept form here. It's going to be a dashed line because it's greater than. So my starting point is 0, negative 8, so down here. My slope is 4, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right one, up 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right one. I'm going to draw in my dotted line. All right. And remember that if I'm going a little too fast for you, because I know that you may need to draw and you may not be as fast as me drawing your line, just pause the video, draw your line, then turn it back on, right? Um, and you just keep going with the process. Now, once again, we want to test 0, 0, all right, to see if we get a true or false statement. So if I plug 0 in, okay, for x and y, I get that. Now, 4 times 0 is 0, so this is going to leave me 0 is greater than negative 8. All right, and that is a true statement. So here's 0, 0, so this is the true side. So once again, I'm drawing arrows. So this is the side I want to shade over here. All right, so let's move to our second line. Okay, once again, we're still in slope-intercept form. This time it's going to be a solid line because I have less than or equal to. All right, so my starting point is going to be 0, 5, which would be right here. My slope is negative 1 third, so I'm going to go down 1 to the right 3, down 1 to the right 3, and now I need to draw my solid line here, all right, just like so, all right, and then once again, now let's go ahead and test 0, 0, so 0 is less than or equal to negative 1 third times 0 plus 5, now once again, all of this is going to be 0, so I get 0 is less than or equal to 5, so notice that is a fall, or true statement, excuse me, that is a true statement, 0 is definitely less than 5 today, all right, so 0, 0 is below our line here, so that means that's where we'd want to shade, just like this. All right, so now we are looking for the region where the arrows are pointing to. All right, and that region would be, all right, this kind of lower left-hand region. So I'm just going to shade all of that. All right, there we go. All right, one more. Let's do number four together. All right, doing number four together. So now, when we look at our first line, it's in standard form. So we're going to use our cover-up method, find our intercepts, and then we know it's going to be a solid line because we have less than or equal to. So if I cover up the y, okay, 18 divided by 3 is 6. So that means my x-intercept is 6. Then I'm going to cover up my x here. 
18 divided by negative 6 is negative 3, so that's my y-intercept. And then once again, we said it was going to be a solid line, so let me just turn my paper here, draw that line in. All right, and then once again, let's test 0, 0. So 3 times 0 minus 6 times 0 is less than or equal to 18. And then all the left side here would be 0, so I get 0 is less than or equal to 18, which is a true statement. So once again, kind of this above area here would be the true region. So I'm going to shade above here. So let's just draw those arrows in. All right, and then one more line here. So now we're in point slope form. All right, it's going to be a dotted line because it's less than. Okay, I can see that my starting point is 2, negative 5. So 2, negative 5 would be right here. My slope is 1 half. So I'm going to go up 1 to the right 2 up one to the right two. I'm just going to go down one back two. Just give me one more point here. And we said it was going to be a dashed line. So let's dash that line up like so. Here we go. All right. And those lines are looking a little bit parallel. All right. So there's definitely a possibility that we might have a no solution problem. All right. So if I plug in zero, zero here, so zero is less than. I'm just going to move my paper over a little bit like that. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. And then negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. So I get 0 is less than negative 6. That is a false statement. So 0, 0 is on the top of the second line here. So all, everything on top of this line is false. So that means we want to shade away from 0, 0. So notice for the first line, we would have shaded up here. For the second line, we would have shaded down here. There is no overlap, so that means this is a no solution problem. All right, my friends. All right, so that wraps up our lesson uh, on systems of linear um, inequalities. All right, so be sure to do your video check-in, and I will see you for the next lesson.